All right, guys. First ever vlog here, so I'm a little bit nervous. Um, so I thought rather than writing long articles or doing something on a Facebook viral thread uh, that would just take forever to read and be very small and you guys probably never get to it, I thought why not just do a short couple of minute video outlining some thoughts I had on particular issues week to week. Now the first one that I was thinking of this week was dietary adherence. So how do we make sure that we stick to a diet plan or a training plan? So I've got four points. There are others, obviously, um, but I'll in, in an attempt to keep this first one succinct, let's talk about just the four points. If you have other ones, definitely share them to the group because I think everybody is individualist, individualistic, are individuals. And these four maybe just occur to me, may not occur to you. So, number one, having a goal. Now, I think I put this as number one because I think it probably is the most important. So, outlining where you are, where you want to be, how you want to get there. And we'll talk about how to get there in a second. But what can be measured can be managed, right? So, we need a starting point, which can be an assessment. It can be scales. It can be... Well, let's just go with an assessment or scales of some kind of thing. Maybe your clothes, dress size, whatever. You know where you are, you know where you and from there you need to figure out where you want to be. Um, time frames are good um, because they give you accountability. So having a 12-week period, a 24-week period, a holiday that you've got coming up, birthday, whatever, wedding. But you go, I want to lose 10 kilos in 10 weeks. You can base that on objective measurements like what is the BMI supposed to be, what is healthy healthy body fat percentage ranges, whatever. That's fine. Um, from there, you want to have a plan. So you've got your start date, you've got your goal, you've got your end date. How do you get there? So you need to have a training structure, presumably. You need to have a dieting structure. Again, presumably some kind of calorie restriction movement increase thing. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, weight training or cardio or any. It can be a combination of the two. It can be a rigid diet plan, which as anybody who trains with me knows, I favor that. But it can simply be some form of Restriction. Some people like, you know, intermittent fasting. Some people like vegetarianism. Some people like um, uh, low carb ketogenic diets, whatever. Really, like the goal and getting there is more important than how you really do it, as long as we're healthy. So, vegetables and stuff need to be a part of it. But having a plan. Now, as most of you know, I favor sort of a a diet break and diet sort of thing. And then we don't have to use those terms. Don't get fixated on those terms. Basically what I want to think about is like say a 12 week block where we're in a calorie restriction of some kind. Uh, and then we want a period of whatever, four to eight weeks where we're not in a calorie restriction. We want to take our calories up to maintenance. And the goal in that time is increasing metabolic rate. That's not necessarily the scientific term, but it, it doesn't matter for our purposes here. We want a period of time where we're in a calorie deficit, burning calories through increased movement and losing body fat. And then we want a period of time where we are, again, doing all those things in terms of activity, but we are giving ourselves a break. Because if you have a goal, let's say you have a goal of 20 kilos to lose and you've set yourself a goal of 12 weeks to do it. Now, is that achievable? Maybe. Is it sustainable? Probably not. Because... When you have more weight to lose in a shorter period of time, it means you have to be a little bit more drastic. But if we break that same goal down and we go 20 kilos to lose over a year, whatever, some kind of longer time frame, we can start to go, okay, let's set up a 12-week diet break or a diet. And we want to lose half a kilo a week, let's say six kilos. And then we want to have a diet break for two months where we maybe lose another half kilo, maybe or at least maintain, gain one or two kilos, that's fine. Then we wanna have another 12 week cup where we lose another six kilos. 
So you're starting to talk about like, what, a 24 week thing. We're starting to get into sort of the half year, but you've lost 12 kilos, you've maintained it for half the year. It's not sexy in the way that, you know, an eight week challenge is sexy, but it does get results. It does change lifestyles. It does create sustainability. And we can go into that deeper in other, in other videos. Social support. Um, many of you have partners, people you live with, friends. Having people who support your goals um, is very important. So many of you know or have experienced those kind of things where you are in a dieting phase and a partner or your friends or your work colleagues are not. So the responses can vary from whatever, it's just one beer who gives a shit to your partner just eating McDonald's in front of you or your friends partying and, and things like that. And when you're when you're like depending on your body fat percentage or whatever, I mean, if you're like quote unquote unhealthy or maybe depressed because of your body or anything like that, it's going to be very difficult for you and you'll want it a lot, but it's going to be very difficult for you to change your habits as it is for anybody. So hanging around these people that don't support your goals, I wouldn't say necessarily get rid of them, but hanging around people who don't support your goals can be problematic. So what can we do about that? So partner, you have a conversation, obviously. Conversations start with all these people, so you can talk to them about like, you know, I've got this goal and blah, 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 blah. Here's my plan, here's my goal. Um, can you maybe get on board? And they'll either will or they won't, and then you can have further discussions or whatever about the consequences of that. If you have friends that you live with, maybe family members, colleagues, again, a conversation about maybe like why the benefits of what you're doing or why you feel like, I mean, you can disclose your personal feelings to whomever you want at whatever degree you desire, but at some conversation of like, I, you know, like you can be abrupt to some people, work colleagues and stuff who are like, what are you doing? You know, you're just like, it's my body, man. Like, leave me alone. But again, you can just have a conversation about why you're doing it and how it benefits you. And you could ask for their support again. Similarly, you will, I would encourage you to seek out people who align with your goals, make gym buddies, make walk in the dog buddies, make, you know, exercise buddies, diet buddies, whatever, like find people in a community that you're already part of who support your goals and buddy up with them. And this video is getting a bit long, so I'll just finish off with one more recovery fatigue management. Being fatigued, is just a part of the modern world. We're all working 50 hour weeks. We're all getting up at 5 a.m. and going to bed at 9 p.m. after 14 hour days. Like we got, I don't, but you, so many of you have kids, um, animals, responsibilities, financial issues, getting recovery, that is sleep. Sleep is the biggest thing. A lot of people are like, what can I do to maximize recovery? You mean you see a lot of supplements, glutamine, all those kind of things aimed at recovery. Sleep is, the number one best recovery method there is. Um, so getting getting it six to eight hours minimum a night um, will foster the best recovery, but it also will keep you from injuring yourself and it will help with hormonal levels to in regards to things like binging and stuff like that. So if you are on a diet plan, you've got a structure, you've got the social support, but you're finding that you're just really, you know, binging and craving and stuff is just getting out of hand. Well, there are many reasons why that may be so. Calories may be too light, exercise might be too high, but it could also be a fatigue thing. So excessive co coffee, lack of sleep, these can all affect blood sugar levels, hormone levels, and create a situation where you're just like, fuck it, I'm going to get Maccas. And that's the kind of stuff that we want to... Uh, we want to get rid of. We don't. We don't want that. So, making sure you're getting a minimum of six to hours sleep, six to hours, six to eight hours sleep, uh, like closer to eight. Anything six and below is starting to get into problems. Um, I have a cat, and he wants to be part of the video, but you can't because you don't know anything about health and fitness. So, come on, scoop, 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 scoop. So. Getting sleep will help with recovery and fatigue. Um, it will obviously help with dealing with training recovery, but it'll also help even out blood sugar levels. So it doesn't necessarily have to be sleep. Baths, quality time with your partner or friends, quality time with your friends, leisure activities. Do you like walks? Do you like, like me, motorbikes, video games, books, board, game, board games, like watching movies, uh, date nights, 
snuggles, whatever like relaxes you, whatever actually like uh, de-stresses your CNS, prioritize it. Make it part of your day. Structure it. Put it in your calendar. Snuggles with the missus. With the missus. Snuggles with a partner. Snuggles with, I was going to say snuggles with friends. Snuggles with your pets. Um, walk in the dog, whatever. Make it part of your life. Make it a priority. Just like the exercise is, make it part of your plan. Um... I think that's it for today. If there's any errors or anything that needs correction, please let me know. If there's anything that you feel like I've left out, don't hesitate to comment in the thread and hopefully this posts. Thanks very much, guys. See you later.